day two of our Someday is Not a Day in the Week Club. I am so glad that you have joined us. I am Sam Horn, and we are going to jump right in because we have a lot to cover today. Now, I hope you have paper and pen in front of you because I'm going to be asking a lot of questions and then we will be posting on our Facebook page our happiness interview so that uh, tonight, perhaps over dinner or on a phone call or FaceTime with a friend or family member, you can answer these questions and go deep into our topic of the day and our questions and action steps. So what is our topic of day two? It is to remember and recreate golden moments. So our topic is how to recreate and remember golden moments. And now our quote of the day comes from Queen Elizabeth. And Queen Elizabeth said, good memories are our second chance at happiness. Good memories are our second chance at happiness. Now I think it's not enough just to remember good memories, we want to recreate them. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So whenever I have an event, we always take photos. And the reason is, is because I say photos are our second chance at happiness. And that when we take a photo of a group gathering or of a conference that we're at or a presentation that we give or a book signing, we can revisit that experience anytime we want in our mind and we can relive it and have that second and third and fourth chance at happiness. So what we're going to be talking about today is to think about those happy moments. And once again, not just remember them, is to recreate them. So we have our success story, then we'll go into our action steps, and then we'll go into our questions. We actually have two success stories today. And the first one is about a significant birthday that I had a while back. And on this birthday, my friends honored me with the birthday party at the National Press Club. I can hardly express what it meant to me to have longtime friends fly in from around the country. My son Tom was there and my son Andrew was there and friends that I had gone to college with and friends that I had worked with at Regency Racquet Club and friends that I knew in Hilton Head and friends from my mastermind. And Mary Loverty and Denise Brousseau hosted this event and they put on a This Is Your Life experience for me. And for example, one of the questions was, which of these is true? That Sam played tennis at the White House and the Ford's golden retriever Liberty stole the tennis balls. <laughs> which of this is true? That Sam actually used to give her sheep gum in the showmanship classes at the 4-H County Fair in Santa Maria. Which of these is true? That Sam taught horseback riding to the Disney grandkids. Which of these is true? That Sam has held her hand under the very same water pump where Helen Keller said her first word. Well, all of them are true. What, what a delight it was going down memory row and recreating these golden moments with friends and family from throughout my life. So the next day after this National Press Club event, one of we were having a dinner around the house and my good friend judy gray was in the kitchen cooking a meal from scratch and we were sitting around the table once again recreating memories remembering all of our golden moments and one of the people at the table was talking about shamans and she had just come back from the pyramids and that she had met a shaman there and one of our uh, individuals was an atheist and she said I just don't know what to do about shamans. And Judy pipes up from the kitchen, just don't squeeze them. Now that's a dated reference. Hopefully some of you know what that means. And then one of people at dinner said, you know, let's go see the movie Midnight in Paris tomorrow. So we all went to see the movie Midnight in Paris. Now, if you saw that movie, you may remember that Owen Wilson is the lead. His name is Gil and he and his fiance go to Paris. Now, Gil is a writer. All he wants to do is go to the great cafes of Paris where Ernest Hemingway and F. Scott Fitzgerald and Salvador Dali and Gertrude Stein used to hang out. And all his fiance wants to do is to go to parties and buy things and shop. And so one night 
he's out on his own and he's walking the streets. He's thinking about this novel he's trying to write. And all of a sudden this clock strikes midnight and up rolls this classic Peugeot car and out steps F. Scott Fitzgerald and says, want to come to a party? And through movie magic, somehow he was transferred back through time and he got to meet F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway and talk about creativity and writing. And, and toward the end of the movie, a young woman in the movie finds out that Gil has time traveled. And she comes up to him and she says, I want to go back and I want to meet Beethoven and I want to meet Mozart and I want to meet... And he takes her by the shoulders and he looks her in the eyes and he implores her. He says, no, he says, don't you understand? These are the golden days. These are the golden days. Our epiphany for today is that even if these are not the golden days, we can create golden moments. We cannot control much in the midst of COVID and coronavirus. We can control that. So we are going to reverse engineer golden moments in our life. We're going to extract the common themes, the common elements of that, and then talk about how even in these unprecedented times, when so much is uncertain, how we are going to create a golden moment every day because that is within our control. Now, I told you there were two success stories. So here's the other success story. I had an opportunity to speak at NASA Goddard Leadership uh, Center and Leadership Series. One of the other speakers was Ben Zander. Now, by the way, if you are not already familiar with Ben Zander's book, The Art of Possibility, or you, if you've not seen one of his talks on YouTube, please do yourself a favor. Of all the speakers I've met in 30 years, Ben Zander is probably one of the most eye-opening, inspiring speakers because of his message. And here's one of the things he said. He is a, a symphony conductor. He has taught music around the world. He is renowned for his ability to to share the joy of music so that other people feel it as well. So at the end of the interview and in the Q&A following his keynote, um, he was asked what success meant to him. Here's what he said. Success is not about wealth or fame or power. It's about how many shining eyes I have around me. Isn't that an interesting definition of success or of happiness? How many shining eyes we have around us? Once again, I'm really updating the book to make sure that it is relevant to these unprecedented, stressful, uncertain times when we cannot control a lot, where there is a lot wrong. And I'm trying to share how we can pivot our mindset and to the degree possible, focus on, take responsibility for being proactive in the midst of a pandemic. And two of the things we can control is on a daily basis is to recreate a golden moment so that we have something today that made us happy, that not only put the light on in our eyes so that we have shining eyes, it's how we can step up and give back, how we can serve other people so that once again, to the degree possible in a world where we cannot control much, we can control this. And that is how to give ourselves and others shining eyes and golden moments, even if these are not golden days. All right. Now here's the action step. Here's how we do it. On your notes, please have a fresh piece of paper and please have three columns. So on your notes, go ahead and put three columns right here. And on the left column, please put remember. At the top of the column, please put remember. 
We're going to actually talk you back through growing up the places and the relationships and the times. And we're going to identify some of your golden moments where the light was on in your eyes, where you had shining eyes around you. Those memories when you think back about your life that are your highlights. So we're going to remember those in this in the middle column. Please put elements. We're going to extract the elements of those golden moments to figure out what made them so special, what made them so memorable. Why out of the hundreds of thousands of millions of moments that we have, do these pop out their top of mind? So we're going to identify the ingredients, the elements of what made those golden moments, those shining eyes. And then third column, Recreate. We're going to talk about how right here, right now, even in the midst of everything that's going on, we remember what gave us those shining eyes and golden moments. We have identified exactly what contributed to it. Now, how can we bring more of that into our life right now? So let's go back to the first column. I'm going to ask some questions. Please be writing down whatever comes to mind. Now, once again, please don't censor it. You know, go ahead and be honest here. First thought, best thought. So first, let's talk about age. And, and once again, you're writing while I'm asking questions. All right, let's think about under 10. All right, did you have a birthday party, a fifth birthday party? Is Did you ride a horse for the first time? Did you have a family vacation that you remember? So what is a golden moment where the light was on in your eyes? Maybe it was the first time you sat down to the piano and made music. Maybe it was a time where you rode a horse for the first time. So under 10, what is a golden moment or what is a time the light went on in your eyes or you had shining eyes around you? All right, let's look at your teens, okay, your junior high and your high school years. Once again, maybe you, you met the love of your life when you were 16 and you had a great first love and that was a, a golden moment. Maybe you were in charge of, your, of a high school dance or maybe you were in high school band or maybe you were in the debate club. So maybe a teacher read something you wrote and told you you had talent. So think about your teen years and a relationship that uh, a time where everything was right with your world. All right, let's go into your 20s. Maybe this is your first job. Maybe this is you're in college. Maybe this is getting married, having a first child. So what was a golden time, a golden moment where the light was on in your eyes or the light was on in the people around you in your 20s? Let's go into your 30s now. All right. If you have kids, maybe your kids are getting a little bit older. Maybe you've got a new job. Maybe you're starting your own business. Maybe you traveled somewhere special. So think about your 30s. Now, you know, I we have people on our group who are in their 20s and people who are in their 70s. So you take the time to fill out the rest of the timeline. Look at your 40s. If you're in your 40s, look at your 50s. So look at the times in your life. Now let's keep prompting this. Let's go to the places in your life. Okay, think about the home in those first 10 years. Do you remember that you had a tree swing in the backyard and how many great hours you spent on that or a trampoline in your backyard or an apple tree and it was it was biting into a, a fresh apple right off the tree or was it that that you had you used to mow the lawn and how good it felt when when you took responsibility for starting a garden or so think about the place of your home growing up. Now think about school. Maybe you were senior class president and you remember putting on the rallies or how good it felt to step into your leadership. Or maybe um, at school uh, you sang in the choir and you will always remember singing hallelujah going into Easter. So think about the place of school. Now think about uh, your workplace. And maybe uh, you'll always remember uh, the first meeting that you held and someone came up and said, that was the best run meeting I've ever been a part of. So think about your workplace and what it was about there that 
Put the light on in your eyes. Maybe it's the first time that you gave a presentation at your workplace and people came up and, and thanked you because you made something understandable that they had never gotten before. So think about your workplace. Now think about your home where you are now. And what is it about your home? Is it that you're, you're on water and every single time you look out at that river or that lake or that ocean, that puts the light on in your eyes? Or is it that you love your neighbors and uh, you actually knock down a fence between you and the neighbors so your kids could run back and forth? So what is a golden moment? What is a time your light went on in your eyes? You had shining eyes around you in the home where you are now. And then let's think about traveling. You know, maybe uh, you will always remember the first time you saw the Mona Lisa and you love art and, and looking at that magnificent painting just thrilled you with the fact that you'd seen it in books and now you were seeing it in person. Maybe you had an, an opportunity to go down the Grand Canyon and you will always remember going over lava falls and what that was like to survive that and have that thrilling experience. So think about travel. Maybe it was a time that uh, you and someone you loved had this romantic experience uh, over in Hawaii. So think about travel and once again, a golden moment where everything was right with your world, where the light was on in your eyes, or you had people around you that were really meaningful. All right, now let's talk about uh, relationships. Is that think back, is that uh, maybe a shining moment was when you celebrated your parents' 50th anniversary. Maybe a shining moment when your life was in someone gave you a tribute and someone gave you a birthday party and a, this is your life. So in the first column, please think back over your life Really try and identify all of those times where the light was on in your eyes. All right, let's move to the second column. And the second column, now we're looking for themes. We're looking for patterns. We're trying to identify the specific ingredients or elements. Maybe it was, and I made a list of these, so let me, oh, maybe it was the fact that you were with people you loved. Maybe it was the fact that you were with people who listened to you or respected you or that you had a lot in common with or that you shared a, a, a history with. So what when it comes to the people involved, what were the specific things that made that time with that individual or that person? What made it so special for you? Maybe it was that that you uh, were always learning new things with this person and that's what you liked. Maybe it's that you were experiencing things for the first time with this person. Maybe it was the deep philosophical conversations that you had with this person. Maybe it was just that you had an opportunity to teach this person, a young person, and to see the light go on in their eyes when you gave them a skill for the first time and built Legos or something and they said, I did it. So think about the loved persons. Now think about maybe the common theme is that a lot of these were outside moving in nature. It was taking a hike somewhere or swimming somewhere or playing tennis somewhere or playing golf on a golf course for the first time. So maybe a common theme is you realize how happy you are when you're out there outside doing something that, that thrills you and fills you with energy because you are in your element outside. How about another one? Is it maybe it was an achievement? Maybe for you, special moments are when you set a goal and you accomplish it and you finish it and you hold yourself accountable. So maybe it was finishing a 10K or maybe it was getting your pilot's license or maybe it was walking across the stage and getting a degree. And for you, what makes a moment, what puts the light on is when you, you set a dream for yourself and you set it in motion and you actually turn that dream into reality. How about another one? Maybe it's giving back for you. Maybe what really makes a difference for you is when you are serving others, you are uplifting others, you are supporting others, you see potential in others and, and they, they are able to achieve something that they never would have without your assistance or help or support or encouragement. 
or maybe you have a unique ability to mentor other people. So maybe in your terms of giving back, maybe you're involved in your community, perhaps in Rotary Club and the, the monetary assistance to people to need it or going to homeless shelters or feeding the hungry. So maybe something, the theme, the river that runs through the elements of that our golden moments for you is when you know that you're doing something that matters, that contributes, and that is making a difference or serving or elevating others. How about um, one last thing about elements is that think back through your life and maybe, maybe what made the moment special was that you imprinted it. I was just on the phone yesterday with a friend that I've known for 40 years. We used to work at the Regency Racquet Club together. Her name is Sue Libano. And when we were going down memory row and in the midst of what's happening, this is what we can do instead of focusing on what's wrong is to remember and recreate what's right. So we were talking about fond memories and she said she remembered a time we played golf and it was at golden hour and the sun was going down and we finished the, the ninth hole. And I said, let's just look around for a moment and let's just imprint this. <laughs> and she said that, that we took a pause, that we actually absorbed it, that we didn't rush by it, that we didn't just hole our putts and put the flag back in and walk off the course and, and have a cold one. It was that we looked around and what made that moment special was that we imprinted it so we could go back in our mind and relive it so it could be as if it happened yesterday. So now you've got your elements. Now let's go over to how to recreate. And I'm going to share some ways that I, I did this exercise yesterday when I was out on my walk and I was thinking about it. And here are some ways is that uh, with loved ones, you know, even in the midst of COVID and coronavirus, I was FaceTiming with my grandson, Hero, and my son, Andrew and Mickey yesterday. And Hero had his first yoga lesson at age three. And the, the instructor, this is virtual, said, put your hands up to the sky. And Hero, little three-year-old Hero, put his hands up to the sky and said, thank you for the air that I breathe. And now put your hands on the ground. And he bent over three and put his hands on the ground and says, Thank you, earth, and ground yourself. And then get down in downward dog. And boy, that three-year-old has downward dog down. And I was there even though I wasn't there. One of the things we're going to do is to redefine what it means to be there in person. Because so many of us are missing the hugs. We're missing the touches. But the thing is, is that I could still touch Hero with my eyes. I could still witness that experience. I could still be there with him in person, even though I wasn't there with him in person. I think these challenging days call us to redefine what it means to be there in person. So let's keep going. Now, these elements that you've got is that um, in nature, you know what? We can't be in Banff and Lake Louise and uh, um, Rocky Mountain State Park, and we can't be there in person. We can be there in virtual. And, and you know, there are free programs right now, virtually, where you get to, they take you to Lake Louise and you may not be there in person. However, you are there in person. If you are imprinting the beauty of it, if you are seeing the miracle of it, if you are imagining the breeze of it, if you are picturing yourself putting a toe in that lake. So if it's nature, you can be there in person, even if you're not there in person. If it's giving back, 
boy, can you give back right now? There are ways that we can support a neighbor by walking their dog if they're not feeling well. We can support a neighbor by maybe asking if they need things at the store and either bringing it themselves and leaving it on their door or arranging for it to be delivered personally. We can give back by thinking about a healthcare worker or someone who is going into an essential job and perhaps giving them a gift certificate so that, that they can have uh, their a meal from their favorite restaurant delivered when they get home. Or what is a way that we can give back virtually, even in the midst of these stressful times? If sports, you're thinking, well, I can't get out and I, I can't do my favorite sport or I can't go to the gym. Well, perhaps you can watch Master Chun Yi Lin, who's giving free half hour Qigong programs every morning. Perhaps you can dance with Daybreaker with thousands of people from 60 different countries. Perhaps you can, Peter Stereos, who runs Levity Yoga, is doing half hour free yoga every morning. So maybe you can't go to where you would normally go. However, perhaps you can still be active, you can still work out, you can still exercise in community, and you can be there in person with other people, even if you're standing in your own living room. All right, now we're going to uh, switch gears here because, boy, do we have uh, a happiness interview. Now, I'm going to put this up on our Facebook page, and I really hope that you print this out and that you, who is someone you really enjoy and you carve out half an hour sometime in the next few days and interview each other with these questions. And the reason is, and let me ask something of you right now. In the Someday book, this is called the Happiness Quiz. And I keep hearing from people that happiness doesn't seem very relevant right now, that there are people struggling, there are people suffering. And especially if we think that happiness is happiness, joy, joy, it almost seems irresponsible or irrelevant or insensitive to even be talking about happiness when there are people who are having such difficult times. So I'm asking you, what is a synonym for happiness? Instead of talking about a happy life, what is a term that is relevant and meaningful for you? Maybe it's to have a meaningful life, a purposeful life, an aligned life. So please share on Facebook, what is your synonym for happiness? And as we go through this course, if that word happiness doesn't work for you, then what does work for you? So here are these questions. Once again, we'll put them up on Facebook. And I have done this with my sister. And of course, I've known my sister longer than anyone I've known in my life. And this quiz questionnaire brought out revelations that we had never discussed before, revelations that we were not aware of before, and revelations that gave us insight into our life that we have been able to apply that not only brought us even closer, that it helped us have the quality of life that we wanted because of our answers to these questions. Okay, here you go. I'll go through them fast. Remember, they'll be posted on the Facebook page so you can print them out and conduct your own. Okay, number one, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you currently? Remember, instead of a happy life, how on a scale of one to 10, you know, where are you in terms of leading a meaningful life, a purposeful life, a, a mindful life, an aligned life? What's your word? Who and what is contributing to your happiness? Who and what is compromising your happiness? Why? Question number one. Question number two. What was your family like growing up? Were you a happy kid? Why or why not? Did you have siblings? Was one a favorite or did you compete with each other or you had a big brother that looked out for you or tormented you? So how about your parents? Uh, did your parents have a good relationship or were they constantly fighting and yelling? So think back growing up and was it a happy home? What was modeled for you or not so much? All right, let's go into sentence three. Fill in this sentence. 
if it wasn't too late, I'd what? I'd start my own business. I'd search for my soulmate. I'd write a book. Do you feel it's too late? If it weren't too late, I'd blank. What if it wasn't too late? It's one of the things we'll be talking about tomorrow. All right, let's go into four. Who is someone you know who is happy? Once again, substitute your word that is meaningful to you. Who is someone who is leading a, 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 a relevant life? Who is someone who's leading a meaningful or purposeful life? Who is someone who is leading an aligned life? And now, why do you say that about them? What is it about them that causes you to think they're happy or fulfilled or they feel they matter? All right, let's go on to five. If I were to right size my life and stuff, I would let go of what? Now we have a whole day on this. If I were to right size my life, <laughs> what would I let go of? Maybe you let go of that big house <laughs> and maybe you've got empty nest syndrome right now and your kids are off and you still got this big house and you realize you don't need it. Maybe there is clutter that every time you look at it, it is, is dispiriting you. So what would you let go of? All right. Number six, what's preventing you from doing that? What's preventing you from releasing it or quitting it or getting rid of it or cleaning it or clearing it up? Now, once again, we have a whole day on the impact that that stuff has on us and how we can maybe let go of some of that stuff to free up time and space and energy for things that might be a little more important. All right, number seven, finish this sentence. Money is blank. The root of all evil, <laughs> the root of all happiness <laughs> is not so important to me, is I never have enough of it. Okay, so what is your default feeling about money? And now, how is that contributing to or compromising your happiness? All right, let's keep doing. Let's talk about your body. Eight, let's talk about your body. Are you fit? Are you vital, physically active? Are you sick? Are you in pain? Are you uh, feeling lethargic and unenergetic? Or you have health problems? How is that affecting your happiness? I will always remember when Oprah was at the height of her powers and it started a book club that had changed the publishing industry and had her school over in Africa and millions of people were watching her every day. And she described herself as self-loathing, self-loathing, all of that in her mind at that time didn't count because she was so unhappy with her body. How do you feel about your body? And is it helping or hurting your quality of life? All right, let's go on to nine. And I know we need to wrap it up here. So number nine is on a scale of one to 10, how fulfilled are you by your work? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Are you in the right job or right career? Or maybe you don't have a job right now and your career went away when the coronavirus moved in. As if, if we are defined by what we do and we don't like what we do, it can be hard to have a happy life. The good news is we have a whole day on how to combine our passion and profession so that we like our work. And if you're thinking, what if I'm retired? Guess what? We'll talk about how even if we're retired, we can still identify the elements that help us feel productive, generative, that we're making a difference through our talents. And let's wrap it up with question 10. And question 10 is, have you ever had a calling? Is there something you felt you were born to do? Did you pursue that or did you abandon it? And how has that impacted you? Did you know growing up that you wanted to be this, you wanted to do this, and you were told it wouldn't earn the bills, and so you gave it up, and it's a major regret of your life? We'll be talking about how maybe we can bring that calling back in our life now, not later, and, and uh, how that can put the light on in our eyes. So those are the questions. We'll put them up on the Facebook group. Now, by the way, the question of the day that was submitted on the Facebook group is, I'm a travel writer. My passion and my profession just went away. 
I can't do them anymore. They were, that's not an option. Guess what? You can be a virtual travel guide <laughs> is that right now, instead of having to be over in Australia, you can look up maybe the five most interesting places in Australia. You can do be doing Facebook lives. And for 15, 20 minutes a day, it's like, OK, you may be in Kansas. However, for 15 minutes a day for five days, we're going to be going to Australia and we're going to be seeing the Sydney Opera House and we're going to be going to the museum in Wellborn and we're going to be going to the Great Barrier Reef. And so even though you can't travel in person, you can be there in person and you can be a docent and a curator so that whether it's 15 minutes a day, three times a week, people can travel vicariously even if they're sitting in their living room. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about how to adopt a sense of urgency. John Cotter out of Harvard said, do you know what the number one prerequisite is for change? A sense of urgency. That's what we'll be talking about in day three. My name is Sam Horn. Once again, I am so glad you have joined our Someday is Not a Day in the Week group. And please be answering these questions and thinking about how you can not just remember the golden moments, not just remember the time you had shining eyes and so did the people around you. You're recreating it right here, right now. See you next time.